Hey everyone, I'm Reed Johnson. I want to thank you for joining today's Food for Thought. We're going to be discussing long-term care. Uh, we've had a lot of people with, uh, coming to us, uh, the families that we work with, asking questions about uh, their existing long-term care insurance premiums increasing. Uh, we've had people who have asked us about, you know, they've had a loved one or family member who's needed long-term care and should they consider it for their financial plan. And uh, I'd love to give you the one uh, answer and we could just end the Food for Thought today, but but unfortunately, every single one of you watching this today has a different uh, um, uh, need when it comes to long-term care. Some of you possibly do need long-term care insurance or some sort of plan for it. Some of you can self-fund it and pay for it yourself. Some of you might be a combination of the two. Uh, and, but the only way to really know how to plan for long-term care is to kind of to put that into your financial plan. So um, because this is really... Uh, one of those things that's individualized for each family that we work with. Um, I've gone ahead and made the decision that I'm going to turn the questions off today and I'm going to ask you to write down the questions that you have today and get with your financial advisor. That might be me or one of the great advisors that work for uh, Lakepoint Advisory Group and Mercer Advisors. So please make sure that uh, you write down your questions today as I go through uh, uh, all the uh, different topics that we're going to go that address long term care today. Uh, in a few minutes, I'm going to be putting on a couple of slides, but I wanted to start off just kind of talking a little bit about what we're going to talk about today when it pertains, as, as it pertains to long-term care. Uh, number one, uh, which as I mentioned before, we've seen a lot of premiums going up. Um, that is not a surprise whatsoever. Um, if you have a traditional long-term care insurance policy, the first thing you can do to see what those premiums are going to continue to increase to is go into the actual policy that you got when you first purchased your long-term care plan. Now, I know some of you might have bought this 10, 20 years ago. That's okay. Um, you can ask for a duplicate policy from the current insurance uh, carrier um, that you put your policy together with, and they'll give you those provisions. Uh, number two, you can ask them uh, for you know what your current uh, benefits are, because I'm going to talk a little bit about that here in a few minutes. Um, and again, typically when we're talking with somebody about long-term care, it's, it's usually one of two things. It's like, hey, they've known somebody or they have a family member who have needed some sort of long-term care. And, and as we're going to talk about here in a few minutes, long-term care can be really expensive. You can have the perfectly executed financial plan, meaning you have enough money, you have the right risk tolerance, uh, you've put together your income plan, your tax plan, your state plan, everything can be humming along. But that one for unforeseen pothole of long-term care and the cost of that on an annual basis can a lot of times erode that perfectly executed plan. So again, hopefully I'll be able to answer some of the questions as it pertains to long-term care. Uh, do I need to get insurance? Do I use asset-based planning? Do I pay for it on my own? And uh, again, my goal is to give you some information to hopefully uh, answer a lot of those questions and then working with your financial advisor and looking at your finance, customized financial plan, we'll be able to answer it, you know, specifically, how do you plan for this potential obstacle in your, in, in your retirement plan? Um, the first thing I wanted to kind of start off with talking about today is 70%, according to CNBC, 70% of every individual will need some sort of long-term care. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. If we kind of dive into, you know, on a more granular level, what we're going to see is, is that only 4.5% of individuals typically go into a nursing facility. So what are they talking about? 70% of individuals will need some sort of long-term care. Um, and what, what typically is not thought about and, and, and when it comes to long-term care is that unpaid care. I want you to think about a spouse who takes care of another spouse, a child who can, takes care of a parent or a parent who might take care of a child. Um, that is where the majority of long-term care uh, happens. Now, I got my license, uh, my insurance license, and I started helping individuals with long-term care back in 2000. So uh, 20, 20, almost 22 years now, uh, I've been working with long-term care and, and I've seen the whole entire spectrum when it comes to long-term care and what that can do for families. And what I mean by that is not insurance, I, I'm talking about not having 
adequate coverage or having uh, a plan for long-term care. Um, I've seen uh, I've seen somebody who had significant amount of wealth and that what had an unforeseen long-term care expense, meaning that a husband had to go to a facility and it was an eight year ordeal. And that money that they planned on being enough for both of their lifetimes got spent on long-term care. And I, I certainly will can tell you right now, knowing that husband before he needed long-term care would not have wanted that money to go to a facility. He wanted to make, he would have wanted to make sure that his wife was taken care of. Um, I've seen other circumstances where people had enough money for living expenses and understood that if they paid for traditional long, uh, I mean, if they paid for traditional long-term care or if they paid for a facility, they wouldn't have enough money. So the spouse decided to take care of, 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 of the, the other spouse. And in one circumstance right here in Dallas, I, I watched a, a family who was awesome. Uh, uh, this particular husband uh, got Alzheimer's and this client decided that she would take care of her husband. Over a 10 year span, I'm talking a decade, uh, watching her take care of her husband. Not only did I watch her health deteriorate, uh, but it was very, very taxing on not just her, but her family. And uh, while he was one of the sweetest people, I, I, I can tell you that I've had the opportunity to meet. And, uh, and not everybody has that experience with Alzheimer's, by the way, but the, he was sweet. Um, just the, the constant worry about him, you know, going out of the house or turning on an oven or um, those type of things were just really debilitating for uh, his wife. And uh, unfortunately, if they would have had some sort of care or help, I know that that circumstance could have been a lot different. So, um, you know, other things that I've seen is car accidents. Um, I, I watched a, a child of, of, of one of the uh, families that I work with um, got in a, a bad accident, uh, automobile accident. And and she ended up living for almost 15 years uh, in home and I watched their just kind of their financial status completely deteriorate. Now, obviously, when you have a loved one, that's not you're not thinking about, hey, you know, do I have enough money for the rest of my retirement? It's like, let's take care of things today. And so what we're going to talk about is, you know, regardless of your situation, how can you make sure that you have enough uh, um, money that you can, you know, make it to and through retirement? And what happens if we have one of these unforeseen potholes that, that comes in the road? Um, there's really three ways to be able to take care of long-term care. Um, the first one is what we'll call self-funding. That's what the majority of the United States does. And what I mean by that is, is that it's kind of like if, if I need it, I'm going to spend it at that point, and then you know I'll I'll, I'll let the the government uh, take care of the the remaining balance. Um, the second way to plan for that is traditional long term care insurance, and then the third way to plan for this is what we'll call asset based long term care planning. So we're going to kind of as we talk about long term care, we're going to talk about how this kind of interacts with all the the questions that you might have about this. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, and hopefully you're able to see this. Um, I wanted to start off oh, we, as we talk about, you know, how do we plan for this? Why should I plan for this? And yeah, this right here is a chart showing just the difference of long-term care, depending on the type of care that you get uh, based on just price increases from 2020 to 2021. 2022 has not been uh, put out as of yet. Um, private rooms uh, for a nursing home, you'll see went from $105, $105,850 per year to $108,405 per year at a nursing home. Now, I want to point out one thing. This is private room. You can do shared room. Now, it's not half the cost. It's about, it's it's probably about uh, two thirds of the cost. Generally, is what you'll see. Uh, but but again, um, it, it, as you can see, if you want to have some privacy. It can be extremely expensive. Um, the average stay in some sort of long-term care uh, facility is kind of in that three to 30 months span. So if you take 30 months, if we divide 105, I'm sorry, $108,405 for a private room, uh, divide that by 12 and then times that by 30, you can kind of see it, 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 it can be pretty catastrophic for some people's financial situation. And that's just for one individual. What if we have a husband and a wife that both need care? Um, the price can be astronomical when it comes to that. 
Now, the second type of care that people uh, typically are looking at is something called assisted living. Um, I want to remind you, assisted living is typically um, when you go uh, to a place and they might help with medication, maybe meal prep, things of that nature, uh, but it's not going to be full convalescent care, meaning they're not going to help with toileting and bathing. Uh, typically, it's, it's, it's somebody who can kind of be on their own at some capacity, but maybe needs a little bit additional help here. Uh, you'll notice that the price of that for 2021 was $54,000 per year per person. Um, now let's talk about what I think most people, at least in my experience over the last two decades, have told me as a read, if at all possible, I want to stay in my own house. So there's a couple of different options when it comes to this. Uh, one is going to be what we'll call a home health care aid. Uh, this is somebody who can actually come to the home um, and will typically, it's not cooking and things of that nature as much as it's bathing, toileting, uh, uh, help with medications, uh, things of that nature. Um, now, uh, the other aspect of that, you're gonna, and that's 61776 per year uh, for 2021. Now, a home care homemaker, um, that's more of, hey, I, I, you know, I can have somebody come help eat, uh, with eating. I can have uh, cleaning, laundry, things of that nature, but it's typically not going to be that toileting and bathing. So um, depending on the level of care you can see I, I, that you're going to need, um, it can be really expensive. So Right now, what's happening in the United States is typically this care, the reason that people aren't paying for this is because they have a loved one or a family member taking care of them. I will tell you over the last decade, I've seen more and more people not have that type of care though. And I think that these numbers of people going to facilities or needing their own care is gonna go up just for the sheer fact that families are not living this close together anymore. Um, we're seeing people, you know, like uh, children are living in different states. Um, there, or they're just, you know, or, or, or as individuals are just wanting to remain independent. So um, if, if, as you can tell, if you need 30 months of one of these type of cares, uh, that uh, type of care, that could absolutely hurt that plan that like, you know, if you're, if you're looking at your financial plan and the probability is 100% or 95% or whatever it is, if you have a long-term care need for 30 months, or if two of you have a long-term care need, that probability can certainly go down. So I think it's important uh, to have this conversation and certainly talk to your financial advisor to see, hey, what does it look like if I need care for 30 months at X dollars? And, and, and we can certainly have that conversation and look at your plan and show you where you are uh, as opposed to, to if you need some sort of planning for that at all. Now, the first way uh, that, you know, we talk about that people, if they're like, hey, I want to take some of this liability off of myself. I think about homeowners insurance, right? Uh, everybody has homeowners insurance, or at least most people do, or automobile insurance. And the hope is I never use this, but in case I do, uh, I'm, I'm going to use it. Statistically speaking, there, you're more likely to need long-term care um, or versus using one of those other policies. I've seen uh, different statistics on that. Now, um, I, I see a lot less people with long-term care insurance. And the reason being is because number one is it's expensive. And number two, again, most people are thinking, hey, I haven't seen anybody in a, long, a nursing home, but they're not thinking about those loved ones that are gonna be the ones that will take care of them. So if you do consider long-term care insurance, here's what you need to know. And if you have a long-term care policy, I would still want you to know this about your existing plan. Number one, is that on a long-term care insurance policy, typically what you're gonna see is it pays a daily benefit amount or a monthly benefit amount. Um, and, and what the, and you usually will see it's like $100 a day, $150 a day, or $3,500 or $4,000 a month. Now what that means is that they will pay all the expenses for the long-term care up to that dollar amount. OK, well, what happens if you need more money than the, the coverage? Well, then you pay for that differential on your own. Now, one thing I'll warn you about traditional long term care insurance is that there are um, usually a, 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 a gap in when it will actually pay. And I'm not talking about the elimination period I'll talk about in a second. What I'm talking about here is that there you have to actually get approval for that facility. So if you have a long term care insurance policy, let's say with XYZ insurance, 
uh, what's going to happen is, is that you're going to uh, do something which is you'll send in, hey, I'm at this facility, and then they have to go through an approval process, which they'll talk with your doctor, then they'll make sure that the facility is an accredited approved facility, and then they'll start ma making the benefit payments. So sometimes we'll see people have money come out of pocket, and then a lot of times they'll be reimbursed if, as long as it doesn't uh, 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 overlap with that elimination period. Uh, the second thing on your policy that you're going to want to know is the benefit period. Uh, some benefits are as little as one year, meaning that they'll only pay for benefits up to one year, maybe three years to coincide with that 30 month uh, average, maybe five years, or I've even seen unlimited, meaning that no matter how long you're in the facility, um, you, it will pay benefits for as long as you're in there. Um, the third thing that you're going to see on a policy and you want to know is an elimination period. Um, this slide right here says usually, you know, 30 days to one year. Um, I'd say that's pretty accurate. I have seen them as little as no elimination, meaning that the day you go to a facility means they'll start making payments right away. Um, the, the lower the elimination period, the higher the, the premium is going to be. Uh, the higher number of years, the higher the premium is going to be. The higher the daily benefit, uh, the more the premium is going to be. And then the last thing, um, well, there's actually two more things. Uh, the next thing you'll see is what's called an, uh, an, an inflation protection. Um, typically, um, there will be no inflation, meaning so let's say we started with $100 as the daily benefit. Next year, it's still 100. The next year, it's 100. The next year, it's 100 if we don't have any type of uh, inflation protection. The next type is what's called a simple inflation. So let's say it was a 5% simple. It's going to be 5% of that initial daily benefit. So uh, if you started with 100, next year will be 105, next year will be 110, 115. It's always going to be 5% of that initial daily benefit. And then compounding um, is going to be when you actually, if, if it's 105, then it's going to be 5% of that 105, and it will actually exponentially grow. So um, the inflation will typically be somewhere between 3 and 5%, uh, either simple or compounded if those riders are on there. Adding these inflation protection features on here are extremely expensive on the policies. So um, the, the, the last thing that I would say in this um, is you can also have shared benefits, meaning that um, it can go one of two ways. You can say, hey, let's say I have $300,000 of benefits and my wife has $300,000 of benefits. Well, if I use all 300, I can use part of her. Uh, but if I use part of hers, her benefits will go down. So um, that's another thing that we see inside these policies that you need to consider as well. All right, kind of uh, going on to that, um, I, I, as I kind of alluded to and mentioned earlier, long-term care insurance policies were never set to have a set premium. Um, you know, a lot of people think when they get into insurance, because they, and, and they typically, I think, think with life insurance, because once you get a life insurance policy, typically, if the policy is structured correctly, the premium stays exactly the same. But you got to think about long-term care, like health insurance, homeowners, uh, auto insurance. Typically, those premiums are going to go up, and as as we see our society aging and and things and people getting older and more people using benefits, those premiums are going to go up. and And how these long term care insurance policies were built is typically they can increase premiums based on an age band and a zip code or a or geographical region. And they have if they raise yours, they have to raise it for everybody inside that same band. Um, you know, a couple of things that really scare me about long-term care insurance policies is I've seen a lot of the carriers that don't, that, that sold it over the last 20 years that aren't even offering those benefits anymore. That doesn't mean your policy is not good anymore. Typically another insurance company is going to buy it or they just don't sell it anymore. But when they stop offering that benefit, uh, typically we see those premiums on that, those age or, or, or those, those regions uh, increasing. And so um, there are ways to, if you have an existing life and long-term care insurance policy to be able to reduce the actual premium. A lot of times you'll get a letter when you get those premium increases. And, and here's the ways that you can reduce those premiums. If you want to keep the, like, let's say you have a health condition and you have no other option. You can't go um, find another better, uh, you know, package or an asset-based type plan. Here's some of the ways to reduce the, the, the premium increases. Number one is you can shorten the benefit period. Remember, maybe you have an unlimited policy and maybe you decrease it to five years or three years or even two and a half years. Um, you can work with the insurance carriers or the provider to be able to do this. 
the second thing is, is maybe you can share the care on another policy. Maybe you both had individual plans and you share one policy that some carriers will allow you to do that. Maybe, you know, that elimination period is 90 days. Maybe you want to put it all the way up to one year. I'll cover that first year. But if I go over that one year, I'll, I'll you know, I, I want to have the, the, the liability on the insurance company. Um, reducing those daily benefits, maybe because you had an inflation uh, protection piece on there, you know, it's, it went from a hundred a day to I've seen people have 300 or $400 a day, and that's way more than what we need today. Maybe you can reduce those daily benefits. Um, certainly you can contact your provider or your insurance agent and talk to them about ways to reduce this. Um, if you don't have somebody, please call us. We'll be more than happy to get on the phone and, and walk through with the carrier and, and find out what your options and build that into your financial plan and find out what your options should be when it comes to this. Um, and then the last one is uh, asset-based planning, which I'm going to talk about here a, a little bit here in a second. So... Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into what asset-based long-term care planning is. Um, so I want you to think about using an, an other asset class um, that maybe was designed for something completely different. Um, one example is life insurance. Life insurance, how does that have to do with long-term, or what does that have to do with long-term care? Uh, typically, when people think about life insurance, they're thinking about, hey, this is, you know, I have this benefit in the event that I'm, I pass away. I have this benefit in the event that uh, I need income because some policies are built for in, you know, tax-free income structures, um, or uh, some people might just have it for a short window of time. I'm renting this insurance. Uh, but regardless of your situation, a lot of the life insurance policies out there allow you to add a rider or a feature that allows to give the death benefit while you're living for long-term care purposes. Um, so you can add this a lot of times to temporary or permanent policies that are out there. Um, this allows you to spend down, as I mentioned, a portion or all of those death benefits, depending on the plan, for long-term care in the event that you need it while you're living. And the money is used to pay for care. You know, Basically, you need to make sure that it will reduce that death benefit. So let's say you have a $300,000 death benefit and you're using that the monies for long-term care that will reduce the death benefit. But you know, I have a lot of people say, you know, Reed, if, I, if, if it's a, the, the difference between my plan having enough money to live the rest of my life or you know, leaving my heirs a little bit more money, I wanna make sure that I have enough money to live the rest of my life. Um, the disclosure at the bottom just says, make sure if you're using one of these asset-based plans that the carrier that you're using, you know, is only as good as their strength. And, and one of the things that I love about Mercer Advisors is that they are very, very particular about the companies that we use when it comes to insurance. And we, we look at high rated companies. And, and, and again, it's only as good as the company that you have that coverage with, including traditional long-term care insurance. The other type of asset-based planning, um, it could be kind of a combination between life insurance or an annuity. Um, and, the, and depending on how you structure this plan, um, a lot of times you're going to get tax-free benefits for long-term care, uh, depending on how that plan is structured. Um, in the event that you don't use it, there's a legacy like life insurance that's there. The growth of the plan could go to those beneficiaries if you don't use it for long-term care. And depending on how you structure this policy, you might even be able to, you know, the money that you put in could be a return of premium uh, where you basically, it has a provision in there that says, hey, if I put $100,000 in today and three years later, I can pull that money out without any surrender charges uh, in, in, that, in that benefit. So there's kind of that life insurance component that we can take a look at. There's also the uh, uh, annuity type of component that we can look at. Um, I'd love to say, hey, one of these is better than the other, but, I, but just kind of as, as I mentioned at the beginning, each one of you has a very specific date, time, reason that you should consider, you know, uh, using long-term care inside of your plan. Um, the, the, the last thing that I think I'll kind of finish with is this. Um, part of part of why I would I would want you guys to kind of talk with your advisor or talk with myself if I'm your advisor about long term care is because some of you have enough money to be able to pay uh, for your own long term care and it might not make sense to tie up some of this money in paying premiums to your traditional long term care it might not make sense to get a life insurance policy or some sort of annuity that has long term care benefits. 
but some of you that are watching this right now um, may have a long-term care insurance policy and those premiums will continue to go up if you don't make some of those changes we talked about. And maybe an asset-based plan is gonna work better for your situation. And in the event that you don't use the premiums or you don't use it, somebody's gonna get something other than the insurance company. So um, hopefully I've kind of given you enough information about what are the, you know, 70% of people are gonna need some sort of care. Traditionally, it's a loved one that takes care of us. Um, if we want to remain independent, maybe having long-term care, uh, some sort of coverage is, is a better option for us. And it really needs to be looked at as part of your financial plan. I would never want you to just say, hey, I, I, my parents need long-term care. Let's go get a long-term care policy. Um, you need to look at your financial plan and see if, when, and why you need one of those. And uh, your team can absolutely help you do that. So um, that's what I have for you today on long-term care. Um, again, if you have any questions, please reach out to your advisor or myself or anybody at the Lake Point Mercer team. Uh, we'll be more than happy to answer those questions. Uh, we want to thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to uh, share this information with you and look over your uh, life savings. We do not take that for granted. We appreciate each one of you. And uh, until our next Food for Thought, I uh, hope you have a great day and uh, look forward to talking soon. Thanks so much.